Hi everyone, welcome to episode 25th of Data Science and AI Weekly. First of all, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure that you do that so that you get the latest notifications from this amazing podcast that we do thrice a week. Uh, at least we try to ensure that it gets launched twice a week for sure. This is Data Science and AI Weekly episode 25th and we are hitting a milestone with this episode and uh, I hope you have loved the series so far because I have totally enjoyed doing it. So. In this episode, we have a very interesting uh, topic that some of you have been uh, requesting for. And in fact, I clearly remember I got an email also some time back, a couple of weeks back that Banav, can you do an episode on how to become a freelance data scientist, right? So let's get started with this episode now. So the first thing that you need to do uh, if you are wanting to become a freelance data scientist is you need to first of all ask these questions that whether you want to become a freelance data science scientist immediately or whether you want to become a freelance data scientist while continuing with your current job you want to take this on the side. So there are two approaches and both the approaches have their own pros and cons. The second thing what you need to ask is that if you're looking to become a freelance data scientist, would you have three of these things? Number one, do you have the requisite skills in data science, machine learning to advise a particular client? A. Number two is, do you have a portfolio to give someone the confidence that you can take up that those uh, problems? And C, do you have any credible work uh, of similar kind from an industry that you would you are interested in taking up projects from for example let's say that you are interested right now you decide that instead of taking any kind of uh, projects i would want to let's say take up projects from bfsi right so if you have worked on bfsi projects in the past or during your program itself on data sets then it would certainly help you because you would be more closely in touch with bfsi problems so these are the three parameters that you should be looking at before you are looking to take up data science projects now this is the first thing the second thing that you should be looking at is that are you in a position to ask questions to a client on a very high level for example sometimes the client might not, not might not even know whether it it requires or they require data science or not right so that's again another problem sometimes the client might want you to do a very specific kind of uh, task in a data science project for example there are enough tasks out there uh, on data cleaning right so whether you would want to do data cleaning which i think there is no harm in doing that because it, it gives you certain amount of experience so you would want to identify those niches for yourself wherein you can project that this is the kind of work that i'm looking to do and the reason why you would want to do that is data science in itself is a very very broad area the more specific you are the more clear you will be with what you want to do what you want to achieve and the more clear the client will also be in terms of what they should approach for you right and once you have two or the three of these clients right then you can take more uh, more clients after that now the question that you would have is where do i find these freelance projects from and how much should i charge for them my first advice always is that when you're getting started in a field do not worry a lot about how much should you be charging charge as nominal rates as possible in fact do it for free for some of the people say that i'll do it for free or at a minimal cost the reason is that people would want to give you a chance right now you're not looking for money what you would want is some exposure that's one second is where do i look for projects there are enough freelancing website just do a google search data science freelance projects and you will be able to get some of the links go through 
these links and try to understand that what are the requirements of the projects and then you would be able to understand that what should be your next steps. So just to summarize, first of all, identify whether you want to do freelancing full time or whether you, you would want to continue with your day job. After that, identify your niche and third is start by researching a little bit on the kind of opportunities available on the uh, and you can do it by googling it and then study them and accordingly find the right fit for you right so those are my tips for you be, being successful as a freelance data scientist it's a fantastic thing to do uh, and uh, i am in fact very very bullish on freelancing data science as a as an opportunity because a lot of companies still can't hire full-time data scientists or might not have enough work for full-time data scientists and this is something that you should definitely look towards so i hope you loved this episode which is episode 25th uh, and if you did leave a comment like this video share with your friends and see you in another episode of this amazing video podcast see you Bye.